Well, good morning, guys, and thank you again for joining me today. Uh, we've been talking on Sundays about how to navigate uh, the discipleship path and to become more like Jesus. Uh, Jesus calls us in, uh, in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Uh, he says that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to us. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And then he says, surely I'll be with you to the very end of the age. Now, Chris Brandt, our discipleship uh, minister, and I have been studying a lot of scripture lately in the past year or so. And we found that Jesus lays out the best teaching model uh, to make disciples. And, uh, that may that may sound surprising or that may sound like a no-brainer, but you'd be shocked how many people say otherwise or take variations of what Jesus does and then modify them to fit their own needs. Uh, so we just wanted to purely take what Jesus did, look at his model, how he taught disciples, how he brought those 12 men into place uh, where they would go and change the world. Uh, he taught his disciples uh, to know about him, uh, to know the Father, to fall in love with him, to fall in love with the Father. His teachings were so radical when they were compared to the average Jewish person, what they were hearing or being taught in the synagogues by other rabbis at the time. Uh, those rabbis were teaching about the law, uh, and then Jesus comes along and begins to teach about forgiveness and repentance and relationship with God and, and love. And all the things that we take for granted when we start talking about Christianity, uh, the people, when Jesus showed up, there was a, there was a, a huge difference, a, a radical change in the way uh, religion would look. Jesus wants us to know about him and to know him uh, cognitively, to know things about him, to know about his father. But he also wants us to move even farther into that knowledge and to know him personally in a relationship with him. And that's the huge difference that took place in the Jewish culture. They were all about the head knowledge, what you could memorize, what you could know. Uh, there's many times where Jesus would say, don't you know the law? And of course they know the law. But the next uh, contrasting question is that usually follows is, you really don't know me or the Father. You just know the law. And, and so the relationship was missing. And that's where Jesus makes this radical change for them. Uh, Jesus, uh, when his disciples began to follow him, he grew them and matured them by doing life together with them for three and a half years. I mean, think about it. They, they woke up every morning with Jesus. They ate breakfast with him and lunch, and dinner. Uh, maybe they had two meals a day. I don't know. Uh, they listened to his teaching. They talked to him. They walked with him. They, they traveled a lot, a great distance. If you go on a journey with someone, if you walk with someone for a long time, you're going to have conversations. They asked great questions. That's what we see in scriptures. Jesus was their rabbi. He was their friend, their Lord, and the most important person in their lives. So they grew exponentially in spiritual maturity to become what we know today as the apostles. And that's not by accident. Jesus intentionally poured into them for the purpose of making disciples. At the end of his ministry, if his earthly ministry, think of it like this. The disciples are about to graduate from Jesus University. <laughs> the resurrected, victorious rabbi who defeated death and Satan is about to send his students out into the world in order to change the world. He tells them to go and make disciples. Go teach the other people what I have taught you. In other words, you are now disciple makers. Go share what I've commanded you to do. Baptize, teach, and obey, and go. And, and that's where we get our discipleship path. It's modeled after Jesus' simple plan to know, right? To know things about Jesus, to know things about God, to, to soak in God's word, to know it, right? And to have the relationship to know God and know Jesus on a personal level, to grow spiritual maturity in wisdom, in thought, in, in our faith, uh, to produce spiritual uh, growth, and, and to be able to go. Those are our three things that we're going to hang this path on, to know, to grow, and to go. And the logical question that comes next is, how do we do that? 
And that's why we're starting this new sermon series at Rocky Fork this Sunday called Rooted. And I really wanted to plug that a little bit because Rooted Design is designed to do all those key waypoints, to know, to grow, and to go. And, and along this discipleship path, you will see how we hang these, these pieces on that, and they begin to become waypoints as we move through uh, growing and, and becoming more like Christ. It's going to be a commitment. And if you will commit to joining us on Sunday mornings, uh, joining a community group, uh, being disciplined enough to practice these spiritual rhythms we're going to talk about and we're going to introduce and rooted, uh, I believe with all of my heart that you will experience God moving in your life, you're spiritually, relationally, and as a church or a body of believers, we will see exponential discipleship growth. Rooted will help us to, to create some healthy spiritual rhythms in our life as we follow uh, Jesus.